everyone, the name is Victor. Today I want to talk about the problem with nice people, or rather the problem with feeling judgy. So there are 10 problems with feeling judgy I want to discuss in this video. The first one is addiction to praise. Feeling judgy types can get really addicted to being thought highly of. You know, the feeling of being seen as good by other people, the feeling of being praised can be an addiction and can distort your motives and the reasons for why you do things. When I was in politics, I noticed how I could get on a kind of praise high, you know, like when I was uh, doing something good in front of an audience, when I was holding a speech or when I was campaigning and I got really passionate and really fired up about what I thought, I could feel everyone's opinion of me. I could feel that everyone thought highly of me. I could feel like I was everyone's friend and that everyone was on my side and everybody thought I was awesome. And uh, that was like an addiction. <laughs> like that was a feeling that got me almost a bit scared. I got a bit frightened by it, realizing that there was a problem with uh, doing something because you wanted to be thought highly of. And there was a problem with the pride of praise, as in, if you get too proud, you get blinded to your motives for why you do things. The other problem with uh, feeling judging is the concern with image. A lot of the time, feeling judging types value image and appearances over actions and precision. That means it is better to be seen good than to do good. There is be it's better to be seen as having done something positive than having actually done the work. There were times in school when I would argue my way to a higher grade, not because I had actually performed to be worthy of a higher grade, but because I, of my appearance, my personality, and because of uh, my ability to adjust and distort my image. So I could cause myself to be seen in a certain way and I could act to get a certain result. And I could convince teachers that I was worthy of a higher grade despite not having performed or abided by the rules necessary to get such a grade. Problem number three is uh, becoming a chameleon. When you're too concerned with image, the problem can be that you act or take on the properties that will get you praised or will get you seen in a positive way. And this can lead to, of course, identitylessness. You can be so focused on appearing good and adjusting to other people's expectations that you lose your own sense of identity. Who are you really? What would you personally have done if nobody else had an opinion? The problem of chameleons is they can adapt to any situation, they can adjust or act in any way necessary for what is expected of them. And sometimes the question is how should you really act? What is most consistent? Are you just... And this brings us to problem number four, being consistent in what you do, being authentic in what you do. Being authentic means going 100% into something, doing something fully, committing to something or an ideal or a value system. I believe if you have a shaky image and if you adjust your image too much to different expectations and if you can't manage the expectations that come from different people, you will be a fraud. Right? You will uh, be a different person to your parents than who you are to your friends. You will. Uh, act and break laws that you wouldn't do for your parents in front of your friends. You will uh, act differently to your teachers or your partner than you would to uh, other people. So the problem of feeling judging is um, getting lost in all these multiple personas and being inconsistent. You know, uh, what happens if all these people see you in the same room? Who will you be? How will you act? Who are you really deep down? Where do you go? What is your most consistent, most authentic form of self? And how do you find that inside yourself? Number five is giving yourself permission. I noticed a lot of eating judging types refuse to give themselves permission to act unless other people want them to. A lot of time, feeling judging types can become immobile or inactive if there is nobody around to see them. If nobody sees them, they degrade their personality and they become a lesser version of themselves, you know. Uh, 
And if uh, other people expect something from them, they push themselves more than they should, and they uh, exhaust themselves trying to live up to other people's expectations. So the me that is alone, the me that is not being watched, the me that is by myself, is very different from the me that is in front of the camera or in front of friends and family members. So feeling judging types need to find a base primary form of self and uh, a sense of who they are and what they expect from themselves. They need to also allow themselves to have a rounded personality, you know, a personality with and this brings us to problem number six. Uh, feeling judging types, they expect, and because they're so concerned with image, they expect themselves to uh, always be beautiful in a sense. And uh, I don't mean it in the stereotypical sense of always having a nice appearance, though that can be the case uh, for some. Uh, I mean it rather in the sense of always appearing good, you know, always focusing on appearances, for always focusing on trying to be perfect from a moral standpoint. So what I can notice is uh, we don't allow ourselves vices or bad habits or uh, things that uh, could be seen as lazy or problematic or so on. And that can cause us to become a little bit, you know, rigid. What you see with uh, feeling judging is it's a judging function and all judging functions can become rigid if you take them to an extreme. So what you have to do is you have to allow yourself a counteracting amount of vices or recreation. If you want to do something good and if you want to commit to something positive, also allow yourself uh, some vices, some recreation, some time to just relax and let loose, some bad habits and some flaws. You know, every character, every hero needs a set of flaws to balance out the good. So allowing yourself going like, I will allow myself to do this. I will be okay with this, I'll let myself act this way. With number five, it's, uh, if you go back to number five, it's that you need to find who you really are, and that's uh, the quest for every FJ type, who am I really, self-discovery process. Um, feeling judging has such so many positive qualities of being a positive example, of leading the way, of having and uh, being the best version of yourself, of setting bad habits and bad emotions aside and trying to do what's right and uh, trying to let go of your own selfishness to do good for other people. Being judging often comes from the act of service or caretaking and nurturing in its most natural form. It's about caretaking and nurturing and support of other and this should eventually learn to also extend towards the self and I think FJs they go through periods of extreme selfishness and extreme care and extreme selfishness and extreme care a lot of time this is just a natural part of growth you go from uh, being very focused on family to becoming very focused on uh, or realizing that you need to work on yourself before you can help other people, to realizing you want to do something good for the world, to realizing that you need to uh, discover yourself, your own passion, and realize your own way, way and identity. So, in the truth of it all, healing judging types are not more or less good than anyone else. I have learned to become very careful with positive feedback. When other people compliment me, and this is uh, eight, you know, uh, don't do things for compliments, do things because they are right. Uh, a lot of feeling judging types, they do things for compliments, not because it's right. So what they, this means is uh, they forget the real reason why they do things. You know, the real reason is you want to do something good and uh, the incentive is compliments, the way it's paid out every time is compliments. That can cause a lot of people to be, get confused. Just like we think we do things for money, when in reality we do things to become, uh, feel good about ourselves and to establish a sense of worth. Uh, we confuse our incentives, we, we confuse our desire to do good for the world with our desire to get praise and compliments. So, you have to learn to 
Go back to the source. Go back to where it really feels good. Compliments come and go, and sometimes you will do good things that will remain unseen and are unnoticed by other people. Sometimes nobody will notice or realize that you've done good until later on in life. And you can't keep yourself from doing good actions and good deeds that will go unpraised and that will go unsung by other people. You have to learn to do things because they are right, and you have to learn to feel good because it is right, not because everybody will praise you for it. The ninth bad habit of uh, feeling judging types is sensitivity to criticism. A lot of time I think feeling judging types will do anything to be seen as good by other people, but if they can't be seen as good by other people, they can run away from criticism and bad feedback. So what that can mean is they will, uh, if other people show them the flaws of what they've done, but if we think we did something good and other people start showing us the flaws of what we did and the consequences, making us realize we didn't do good at all, we can become almost blind. You can become blinded by pride. And uh, that's number 10, blinded by pride. We, if we get too caught, too attached to the idea of ourselves as the good people in the world, we can rationalize any form of bad behavior. We can trick ourselves into believing that we can do or that we can get away with anything. Anything we, can, we do, we do because we deserve it, because we have done good, because we are good people. We get caught into the idea that we can't see the consequences of any of our actions. And this is, I believe, the problem with the, you know, a lot of cult leaders and a lot of leaders out there that uh, lead with feeling judging. They get stuck in the idea that anything they do is for the greater good. And <laughs> if you start thinking about it, it's for the greater good, uh, then you know you're the nice already there. So be careful of that. And um, yeah, always be real. Always be real with yourself. Recognize you're just a human. Recognize you have problems. Recognize you have issues. Recognize that the you're not always uh, uh, going to be perfect. Recognize that you have that other people have a right to criticize you, and recognize you that you are not yet the best version of yourself, and you will never be. You will always be a work in progress, and there will always be things to improve and better upon. This is especially a lesson for more dominant FJs. You know, FJs that have a very high amount of confidence and a very high, strong sense of righteousness. If you have a very strong sense of righteousness and confidence, you need to learn the lessons of conscience. You have to listen to your conscience and learn to uh, go, wait a second, was that really the right thing to do? Wait a second, should I really have done that? Could I have done something better? Is there merit to the other person's criticism? And here's a small bonus. Be real with people. Number 11, the small bonus, be real with people. I see a lot of FJs that uh, try to say whatever other people will like, try to do whatever other people will see or appreciate, but that's such a danger, that's such a problem, because you are alienating and making other people feel alone. If you don't connect with people as a human being, as a human being with flaws and problems, you're not really connecting with if you connect by people only through your radiant smile and charm and with the pretty words, you're also building a fake version of yourself, a fake, cold, hollow version of yourself that, yeah, might fool some people, but will not fool your real friends and the people that you truly care about and the people that really need to meet you and see you. There are lots of people out there like you that deserve to meet you and talk to you and have real conversations with you. So. Yeah, find those people and learn to be yourself with those people. That's the bonus and that's my. this is my video on feeling judging, the 10 problems of feeling judging. If you're an ENFJ, ISFJ, INFJ, or what did I forget, <laughs> ESFJ or ENFJ. Yeah, uh, if you're any of these four types, you might benefit from watching this video. And so share this video with other FJs and uh, yeah, let's support each other and let's be real and let's be good people. <laughs> and uh, still, let's be down to earth in our goodness. That's my advice. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.